you can see that this is going to be a multi-stage event, right? Well, it's a multi-multi-stage event. Obviously, several balls are chosen, but some of them are blue-red, on which there's one rule that operates, okay? And then some of them will be white, on which another rule operates. Does that make sense? So in order to be able to do something with these, I need to know how many will be blue-red and how many will be white, okay? Now, just look, look, the previous part of the question, part two, is trying to nudge you in a direction. It says, N minus R, balls are white. Have a look at part one. R balls are blue red. If you take that many blue red and that many white, you put them together and you'll have N in total. Does that make sense? Okay. So what I'm gonna say, if, if N of them are chosen, let R, right, be blue red, which means the remainder, that's N takeaway R, of white. Okay? Now, remember, you want to pick these and those, these and those. So how am I going to combine these together? These numbers, right? The, the number of ways together. I have to multiply, right? Because I've got to do these ones and I've got to do these ones. This number here, the number of ways is just R plus one ways, right? And then over here, uh, this is NCR ways. You with me so far? Okay. So what I've got here is the total number of ways with, remember I've defined R, blue, red, oops, that's a U, is equal to, okay? This is how many you're gonna do one part, first stage is over, R plus one, and then this is how many you've got to do for the white ones, second stage, done, okay? So you look at that and you think, okay, well that's true, but it's not what they were asking me to do, right? What am I missing? What am I missing? Let's put a value on n, right? Let's suppose n's five, okay? The example we chose for r was um, three, right? That was the one I chose. So suppose this is three. <laughs> Someone's been watching the killing joke. Okay. Um, <laughs> You got five, you got three, how many white? Okay, now here's one way of doing this, right? And under this scheme, there's lots of different ways to get a different configuration, okay? But who said there had to be three blue and red? How many other ones could there be? It could be four, or two, or five, or one, or zero, right? Any number of options, right? So what I need is all of them. I need all of them. If only I had a way of adding up terms where I need all of the whole numbers. But wait, I do. It's called, have I got it there? It's called sigma notation, right? You see this? Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I've got, this is the number of ways with R, blue and red, okay? So now I want the total ways with any number of blue or red. Okay? So I need to add up a whole bunch of these with different values of R. Okay? So I'm going to add up. Um, what's the smallest number of blue red that I could have? Zero. I don't have to choose any. They could all be white. That's fine. What's the largest number of blue red I could choose? N. 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 There are n balls being chosen, right? So I can choose n, and that means there will be none that will be white. Does that make sense? Right? Because this will be n, and that will be n minus n, which is zero, right? So I can go all the way up to n. And then this is what I'm adding up each time, like so, okay? Now, look at what you've got, and look at where you've got to get to, okay? See where you've got to get to. What am I gonna have to do with this thing? Because I can't work with it right now. It's not what I'm supposed to have. Okay, yeah, I've got all these earlier parts that I can use. For instance, I mean, I've rubbed one of them off, but I can use this, right? See this? Where is that in there? Do you see it hiding? It's going to help if I break this in two pieces, right? There's the piece that has uh, the R, lots of this. Does that look familiar? And then there's the piece which has the one lot of this. 
Is that okay? Yeah. So this is this is one more thing that I'm adding up. Now, the sum of the sums is the sum of the sums, okay? That was not confusing at all. I'm going to break these two apart. This is segmentation. I'm just adding up a whole bunch of these and a whole bunch of these so I can regard them separately. You'll see why this is important in a second. This is R and C. R and then there's just NCR. Okay, now look carefully. Don't miss any details. Let's have a go at this one first. Do we know what this is equal to? Look, look, you've just been doing this question for like half an hour. This is to the power of n, right? We know that, I mean, it's kind of an important identity, but we also proved it in part b, part one, right? Part b, part one? Yeah. What about this guy? Do I have a value that looks exactly like that? Ah, not quite. I'm so very close, but I'm not quite. Because look, you're like, ah, it's zero. You're not supposed to be zero. Why you do that for? Okay, but that's all right. That's okay. I just have to take off the zero term, and then I'll be left with the one, two, three, four, five up to the n. Does that make sense? So I'm going to pull up. Yeah, no, it's okay. I know what the zero term is going to be, but I need to prove it. This is a proof question. Okay. So therefore, I don't need a lot more space. I reckon this will do it. From this line, I'm going to break apart just like I broke about this sig notation into two. I'm going to break apart this, just like with factorials. I'm going to peel off the, f the first one, or the biggest one, right? Um, so I'm going to say, here is the zero term. It's zero, and C zero. That's the zero term, right? And then what I'm left with is from one up to n. Does that make sense? Just took it off the front. Um, of R, N, C, R. Ah, this, this I can deal with. Plus this other signification that we already have worked out what to do. Okay, we're pretty much there. Let's evaluate. Get this out of the way. First term, first term. Zero. First term is zero, right? Uh, this guy here is the uh, n. Is it n or is it r? N two to the n minus one. What about this guy? Can you can you do the two? Okay, now, just having a look at where I'm supposed to be going, the result that's required, and you look at this and you're like, eh, that's not in the right form, I've got to have the n minus 1 power. So to do that, I'm going to take out an n, a 2, right? So this is n lots of this, and then if I take a 2 out, there will be 2n minus 1 left. And now, now you're part of the 2%. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's, a, it's a bigger number now. Okay. So let's just stop for a moment. What made this question challenging? Because there were lots of things that made this question challenging. Go back to part B. Go back to part B for a second. What was hard about part B? Part B. Yep, just part B. It wasn't as hard, but tell me what was different. Differentiate. No, no. Because I've defined some to be blue-red because there's one way of, there's one scheme that works for those and there's another scheme that works for the white ones, right? Yeah, so if I know that there are R that are blue-red, then I already know that there are N minus R that are white. I don't have to say that as well, oh. okay? So it's just like saying, oh, if there are three blue, I don't need to tell you how many reds there are, that's implied, okay? So I don't have to work that out as a separate thing. In fact, if you do, you will overcount. So it's like, I've done them, I've dealt with that, that already defines how many white ones I've got. Right, so I don't say anything. Um, I think the only hard thing in part B was really just recognizing, oh, differentiate, okay, and then it falls out. Part C was obviously much more difficult. Um, what strategies that I did I use that made it click for you? Simple stuff. Okay, number one, like, I just drew things. I just drew things and I'm like, oh, pattern. I can see through what really matters. I'm not just going to kind of blindly do, ah, I know I've got to choose from that many, and I've got to choose that many. Good luck getting R plus one out of that, right? Um, I, I saw from the picture how I could say, oh, okay, what really matters, and therefore this is the setting of details, right? And then when you got to like, say, part three, what did I keep on saying as I went through this? I kept on banging, yeah, use the previous parts and look at where you're headed. Right? If you keep your, if you keep one eye from where you came from and one eye where you're headed, you'll you'll be fine. Like these these steps don't come out of nowhere. They're like, oh, well I've got to use that result. I haven't used it yet, and I've got to change this form so that I can break apart these sigma notations because otherwise I can't use these substitutions from the earlier parts. Does that make sense?